if it's going to take us 12 to 18 months to get a vaccine, yes, I know there's good news coming out of the Moderna and NIH vaccine, good news coming uh, out of the Oxford program, good news coming out of J&J. So let's say that we have a vaccine in 10 months, and let's say it's in the field in trials now, and that it's in the arms of first responders this fall, and it's available next year. So that's one year. Uh, It's going to take us six months to have the food fight as we figure out where the vaccine gets distributed. Will Bill Gates' generous offer to stand up six vaccine uh, factories in the United States, will that be developed in time to help? Um, Will we be able to get India and China to develop vaccine in their their formidable vaccine production facilities in Africa? Will we be able to stand one up? So let's say now you're talking about the full 18 months. So what happens after 18 months? It doesn't end with a bang, Ian. It ends with a vaccination program. And then you've got to go and deliver vaccine to 215 countries and not to the capital cities. You need to deliver it, as we just talked about, to the poorest and most vulnerable people in the most outlying areas, in the most remote parts of those countries. And what does that look like to you? It, to me, it looks like the polio eradication program or the smallpox eradication mm-hmm. program. Which you were a part it, of. Yeah. Yes, and, and both of them, and I'm proud of them. Uh, but that's what we need to have again. We should be today thinking about what is that program going to look like that delivers two different kinds of vaccination waves. One, the kind of mass vaccination that increases herd immunity. Herd immunity is both the injected and the infected who have become immune. Um, but we, we, should, we should raise the level of herd immunity, and then we should go after individual clusters that are resistant, communities that are having a hard time with it. But all of that should be done in a coordinated way or you're going to have uh, countries that are so behind lagging that the virus continues to form a Wuhan or a Northern Italy. So we should be thinking about that now. We should be fighting about it now, adjudicating it now, bringing it to the Security Council now. Nada, crickets. So three three years, a concerted effort to uh, flatten the, the curve. The curve is not Mount Fuji. This is not Mount Shasta, it's not Lone Mountain that has the same slope up as down. It's a tidal wave followed by rogue waves and echo waves and, uh, and swells, <laughs> uh, the, the height of which depends upon how well we work and how good we are. Listening to you and watching you, I will say you came across, the assumption seemed pretty confident that, yeah, within a year to 18 months, it's not just that we could get a vaccine distributed. We are going to have a successful vaccine. Is that an acceptable level of confidence to have? I mean, is it is it reasonably possible that we fail on the vaccine front? I am pretty confident that we will have multiple vaccines. I think we have 60 right now that are in various stage of uh, thinking about and doing. We have five that are in phase one trials. Yep. Um, it, it, it's hard for me to believe that we won't have a vaccine or said another way, we will have a vaccine, whether it'll be as good as the smallpox vaccination or the polio vaccination. No, I don't think so. That took in one case hundreds of years. Uh, will it be better than uh, BCG or the seasonal flu vaccine? Yes. I'm highly confident that we will wind up with a vaccine that produces more uh, antigenicity and more immunity than the virus itself uh, at a 70 or 80% or higher uh, rate, and does so for at least the period of observation, which is one or two years. And that allows you to really bring the economies back to functioning, right? Yeah. 